how many of you are on the easy road? How many of you are right now are, are doing the thing that you've just always done? Maybe you're in the military, maybe you're in law enforcement, maybe you're in a career path, whatever that may be, but you're just not, it's not what you want. And you have this curiosity of what could be, or you have this vision or dream of, of a life outside of that, but you lack the courage to take the step. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we did a little open mat for Veterans Day. And after, you know, the best part of jujitsu sometimes, and everybody knows this, is like, you know, when you're just absolutely smoked, have to roll in for over an hour, and uh, you're just laying on the mats, and everybody kind of just huddles around, and we, we chat. So anyways, I was chatting with a guy uh, who, again, I've talked about him in the past. He was one of those hammers that when I started jujitsu as a white belt, they just absolutely, he was just one of the guys that just absolutely destroyed me. I mean, just mercilessly destroyed me. Matter of fact, he was one of the first guys that put me out. And you say, oh, you should have tapped. I didn't know I was going out. I didn't even know that he had a choke in. It was, I just kind of woke up and realized that a very sneaky thing. But anyways, thank you, Ben. But we had a great conversation and I was trying to tell him a story about, and we were having this, this discussion about psychology and why we make the decisions that we do. And is it nature versus nurture is it you know we were we were really getting into this the deep into the psychology of why we make the choices that we do and let me give you the story to where i can kind of take you down that road so for those that, of you that know or maybe you don't know when i was young i got myself involved in a gang crime if you will uh, by the time I was 13, I had two felonies under my belt. One burglary of a conveyance they nailed me with. And then uh, the second one was because I was on probation. I got caught with a weapon on school grounds, which was the second school that I was in because I got kicked out of my first school because of the first felony. So nonetheless, we, uh, we, were, we were not living the way that I should be living. I, I straightened myself up. So that's kind of one why in the, in the road. And, and that why was I remember getting processed through county and I was 13, I think it was 13 at the time, 12 or 13. And I remember I was not as tough and big and bad as I, as I once thought I was, you know, you go to juvie, it's one thing you're in there with your peers, a bunch of kids. And I felt like I was still some, you know, some tough shit there. But then I got processed because juvie was full, which, you know, says a lot, right? Juvie was full. So I got processed through County and that was quite the wake up call, not to mention this time I got kind of rolled over on everybody that was a kind of a part of our crew kind of just disappeared and they all talked. I didn't talk. So I got the book thrown at me. Uh, I was the the hardcore guy that didn't, that didn't say anything to the uh, detectives. Like, you're not going to crack me. And uh, well, they cracked, not only did they cracked me, they threw the book at me and I didn't really give them any information, but because I did and they all, everybody else cut deals. So that was kind of an eye opening for me. So that decided right then that I was going to in some way change my life. So let's fast forward. I did three years of uh, community service. That was my my mom worked a hell of a deal with the prosecutor and the judge. And I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of string she pulled or what she did, but I got three years of probation, uh, which would meant three years of community service. So outside of that, I decided that I was going to really clean up my act and really focus on you know bettering my life in some way. What that meant, I don't know. But fast forward to a few years, I, I got a job, and, and some of you guys know this, is I was working uh, as an audiovisual technical person in the Bay Point Marriott Conference Center. So from 6 a.m. to 2, I would set up projectors, microphones, lights, whatever they needed to run their conferences. Um, if anybody's been to a conference center, you know that you have audiovisual uh, support there, and that's what I did. I was the audiovisual support there, 16, 17 years old, making, a th I want to say, $15 an hour at the time. $15 an hour in 1997, 98, maybe. That was good money. And then from two, I'd take a 30 minute break. I'd go get a club sandwich with French fries at the Bay Point uh, employee kitchen uh, for 30 minutes. I changed into my little Hawaiian shirt. And from 2.30 to 10 o'clock, I was a bellman making tips in like two two twenty five an hour. But those tips were like $100 bills at a pop. So I was making somewhere along the lines of, a th you know, it was a lot, man. It was like close to, could be some, some days collectively with everything, with both jobs, like 4,000 a week. It was nuts in the nineties, right? For a 16, 17 year old. And this is when it happened. This is when it hit me. I remember looking at my, my seniors, the, the senior, the senior bellman, the, the, the manager of the manager of the, uh, the gym there. And 
I pictured my lo- me in their shoes. I pictured that was the, the future for me. And there's nothing wrong with those guys, right? I'm sure they're making really good money. And this is where I, we were having the conversation. I was, I was like, what is this? What causes me to make these decisions? What is there anything wrong with that? And uh, he's actually getting his uh, PhD in organizational psychology. Uh, so I like to have these conversations. Nonetheless, he goes, you know, I think it's it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's it's about a it's a creative thing. And what I mean by that was this, or a curiosity thing, more so a curiosity thing. There was nothing that I, nothing that, that was wrong with the other professions, the other guys that were, you know, and which I thought were ancient at the time. They were probably like mid thirties and forties, but I, I thought they were fifties and sixties. I'm a teenager, but I just knew that that's not the success or the life that I wanted. So I chose a path to the right, and that path meaning giving up all that money, giving up the beach house that I lived in uh, at the time, giving up, you know, my transportation situation that I, everything that I had, I had to give up because I went to the Marine Corps recruiter and I said, I want to join the Marine Corps. And they said, absolutely. Let's run your information. Some of you guys know this story. There's a Brandon will link a YouTube video uh, to me getting in the military with a, a felony record, but they said no because of my felonies. So that lit a fire under me. I, I, I just could not, the audacity, the audacity of this recruiter to tell me that I could not do what I wanted to do. And that lit a fire in me to where that a two year, a two year fight of me getting in. So going back to this fork in the road that led me to where I'm at today, and there's been many forks, but this, this one particular one, what drove me? And that's my question to him was what drove me down that road versus the other road? Because so many other people just continue to go down the road that they're on versus making that hard, you know, the the exit off of the interstate to a road less traveled. And it, first, it comes down to, to curiosity. What could be? I, kn- I know that this is not where I want to go, right? I know this is not the road for me. But what could be? What could be my life? I know I don't want it to be that. And it comes down to first having the curiosity of what could be. And then second the courage to take that step. So here I am making all this money and I, I lose those jobs and then I have to move in with my grandmother. I go to school and I just start this two year long journey of suck. I mean, it sucked. I'm making 425 an hour. I think my first check in two weeks working at nights at a other movie theater in, in Panama City was like 175. So I go from making, you know, 15 to 20K a month to, <laughs> I don't know. 175 $200 every two weeks. I was like, how do people live off this? You don't. So I got financial aid and I get all this stuff from school and I'm living with my grandmother. I'm trying to make end meets and I'm, I'm just on mission. And I think the point of that is first is curiosity. What could be the second thing is courage to take that step. And I, and I wonder how many people lack the courage to take that step. And maybe one of you are right now are at a fork in the road and you could take the easy road. The easy road how many of you are on the easy road? How many of you are right now are, are doing the thing that you've just always done? Maybe you're in the military, maybe you're in law enforcement, maybe you're in a career path, whatever that may be, but you're just not, it's not what you want. And you have this curiosity of what could be, or you have this vision or dream of, of a life outside of that, but you lack the courage to take the step. And to me, that's, that's crazy because we got this, we only got one life. Looking back on it now, of course, it's crazy. But if I would not have taken that step, if I would not have sacrificed and joined the, you know, did this to join the military, join the military, and then taken selection for the first thing, taken selection for the second thing, done everything that I did, and then, you know, contracted and got that job and then had the courage to to take the road less travel again, I think when it comes down to it, you have to have the curiosity of what could be, and then you absolutely must have the courage to take that step. You'll never know what absolutely, what your life could be. If you did not have the courage to take that first step. And here's the reality is I had a lot of failures along the way. I mean, I got had failures in the Marine Corps. I had failures at boot camp. I got seven days in, I break my wrist, and I get dropped for two and a half months. But that doesn't matter. It's about taking the, the courage of taking that step because those failures are nothing more than tuition payments. Those failures mean for me, instead of the limiting belief of my past failures mean my future failures, it's the opposite of that. It's that my past failures ensure my future success. And that's actually a court, that's actually a, uh, a line out of uh, my limiting beliefs course. 
that you can get on my website or, or DM me on Instagram. So it, it's an absolute must that you have, you do have that courage and you find the courage within you to take that first step. And you don't have to worry about the whole plan. Like you don't have to worry. I mean, create a vision, of course, but you don't have to have it all, all worked out. You just have to have the courage to take that first step on maybe it's, maybe it's just a, a side goal. Maybe it's a personal thing. But if you continue down the road of what is, you'll never know what might be. And you only get one life here, ladies and gentlemen. No one's making it out alive. So go be the captain of your own ship, the sea of your own life. Go run it. Run the play. And have the courage to take the step in the direction that you truly want to go. If you guys have questions on this or you want to get deeper into this conversation, there's a link below to join the Agogi, as well as you can drop a comment. Share this with somebody who probably needs to hear it. A lot of people need to hear it. And you guys know the deal. Never quit. We never surrender. And we always keep moving forward. Peace.